welcome to the call. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad you guys all could make it here. Uh, I've been working on this script for a good while now. And I think it's, I think it's at a point where at least I can show you the draft. And if there's, I don't expect there to be any issues with it, but if there's anything I should change, like, you know, this is, this is a no judgment space, right? You can give me a little feedback. Does that kind of sound good? Sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. All right. All right. So not all of you have necessarily met each other. So we'll kind of just go through the, uh, the group here. So uh, here we've got uh, James. You want to wave your hand, James? So James, I brought you out today because, um, I mean, you're, you're a self-published writer. You know, you've done it. You've, you've put your words out there into the world. You've kind of refined your technique. I think you're, you're going to have a lot of insight for me here. And we've got, we've got Josh. Josh, you want to wave your hand? Uh, Josh is an aspiring writer who is really just has a penchant for putting in an absolutely ungodly quantity of detail. So I think that'll be really good if I want to spend just years and years continually refining my script and never actually finishing it. So I think that's really what he brings to the team here. Damn right. And so then we've got, okay, we've got Nicole. Nicole, do you want to wave your hand? All right. Awesome. So Nicole is another aspiring writer who, you know, published or not, there's nobody else on the planet, I think, I think, who writes better ogre erotica. Oh, that's and, very flattering. Thank agreed. you. Yeah. 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 Some of us already know this. So, and, oh, and of course we have Adam and Adam, I, you know, wave your hand and I, uh, I brought you here, of course, because you know you you minored in creative writing at the at the U of A, right? Of course. Yeah. So that's kind of why we're here. So I've got. To, does everyone have the script pulled up here? I right. sure do. Yeah. Got it on my phone, like a good millennial would. Oh, awesome. We've got some characters. They're all just kind of you know uh, characters that I think will fit well in this movie. And if each of you could read for a character, I guess. I figure we can just assign them arbitrarily as we go. I think so, that'll work fine. Yeah. And you know, this is this is not a table read. You're not actors. You don't have to really inhabit the character. We're just, you know, this is writing feedback. So uh, even if you don't feel like your character, you, you just read the words and we'll get through it. Okay, is everyone ready to go? Yep. Uh, yep. yep. Yes. So here's scene one. Fade in. Interior war room of some sort the president is surrounded by a cadre of advisors they are going back and forth with each other like they are disciples in the last supper but the president pays them no heed hand steepled the president is not just dashing articulate and jacked as hell but also a woman she is 35 old enough to legally be president but young enough to test well among key male demographics <laughs> She wears a smart pantsuit, professional enough to be taken seriously, but still revealing enough to test well among key male demographics. After a few seconds of intense staring directly into the camera, she speaks. And I don't know, let's assign someone at random. Nicole, do you want to be the president? Oh, I, I, I suppose I can, I can put myself in these shoes. All right, so just jump right into reading your line whenever you're ready. Gentlemen, please, the time for bickering is over. We've just lost another Carolina. We can't afford to lose time to put our time to our own egos. I thought that said eggs. <laughs> can't afford to lose time to our right, own is egos. Is that a note? Do you want me to change it to eggs? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> that says a woman, I'm constantly thinking about the timeliness of my eggs and how they're rotting inside and, me. And at 35. 35. At, at 35, oh. that clock's a ticket. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, we are simply out of out of our depth. I think we can no longer we ha no longer have a choice but to listen to an expert, no matter how unconventional he may be. As she speaks this last sentence, a hush falls over the advisors. The president has commanded their attention with this completely unacceptable suggestion. Close up of one of the advisors, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. He is dashing, articulate, and jacked as hell. Normally immaculate, <laughs> clean shaven. He is sporting a two-day beard to show that he is working through a national emergency. Uh, I don't know. Adam, why don't you take this one? That's a two-day beard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not an actor. You have not shaved for two days. That's what it means. Madam President, please. I know we've had our share of disagreements, and not just when we were together, but if you only listen to me, 
one time <laughs> let it be now this man is dangerous we cannot just go and implement his half-baked ideas the president drops her head quickly to hide that she is blushing as she's momentarily lost for words another advisor speaks up the secretary of energy he has a sallow pale face with sunken eyes greasy hair and an odor that you can almost see on screen unconsciously he wrings his grimy and unmanicured hands, his clumsy sausage fingers barely able to navigate each other, the motion belying the short sleeves of his ill-fitted suit. He smacks his chap lips together, clears his throat phlegmatically in a way that causes those next to him to recoil and begins to speak in his whining, nasal, intolerable tone. Oh, I guess we'll have to cast this. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. Um, Josh, do you want to be this person? I think I think I, I think I can embody this character perfectly. Again, I know you're not an actor, but you know you just you know do your best. But but you can't do this to me. I've stood by your side all this time, even though you told me we can never be together. Please, Madam President, if you just give me more time. The Secretary of Energy desperately, pathetically fumbles to pronounce produce a crumpled, oily note with childlike handwriting all over it. I, I believe I've hit upon the answer this time. You see, the key appears to lie in this manga I was reading. <laughs> the president cuts him off, raising her head again and wagging her finger at him, doing the opposite of blushing. That's enough, Secretary Poindexter. We don't have any more Carolinas left to lose. It's time to put in the call. Cut to exterior, White House, nighttime. A large, unidentifiable celestial object looms menacingly over the White House. A massive aperture in its center flares open with the spreading of a heavy metallic series of triangular hatch-like components, <laughs> revealing a glowing bluish-green interior. Dramatic <laughs> music swells. Interior, a cozy recording studio. <laughs> a Jeff Goldblum type sits before a condenser microphone with some sort of hippie bullshit tapestry hanging behind him. He is granola crunchy, far more crunchy than Aubrey Marcus, but far less crunchy than David Wolf. He has a mustache, although it looks uh, like he could easily grow a smart, tidy beard. In fact, it might even look great on him, better than the mustache. His concerned face is intercut with a view of a countdown timer on his laptop screen, which reaches all zeros as the dramatic music reaches its climax. A close-up of his face shows him raise his eyes from the laptop and mutter, uh, run out of people. I, uh, James, do you want to be this one? Uh, Jeff Goldblum type. Let's see what I can do. Um, <clears throat> time's up, ma'am. Exterior, White House, nighttime. The large, unidentifiable celestial object continues to loom menacingly over the White House. The doors of its massive aperture begin to shoot blue-green lightning into a convergent electric ball, culminating in the sudden blast of a beam of greenish-blue energy down into the White House. Instantaneously, its windows all alight with a fiery glow, each bursting with a small explosion before quickly cascading into the full-blown destruction of the building with shrapnel flying in every direction. A dog jumps out of the way just in time. Oh, thank God. Cut to interior hallway. Flanked by Secret Service agents, a Matt Damon type escorts the Jeff Goldblum type toward the war room of some sort. The Matt Damon type, a retired Texas Ranger with a mustache, which he wears for professional reasons, but you can tell that he looks much better with a thick, luscious beard that is very sexy and lends some gravitas. Well, hmm, like you guys all have a role, so I, I guess I can just play this character. <laughs> you would leave that for yourself. You know, I just, random, you know? The character is just signed random. Never, never written with anyone in mind each time, right? No. No, I need to understand uh, that these folks still don't really trust you. Hell, I sure as shit don't trust you, but if Madam President says you're the only hope we got, well, I reckon that's all we have. Do you uh, trust... Quick, sorry, quick what? note here. Um, why does yep. Matt Damon sound like Matthew McConaughey? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I didn't well, know he was you know, I, that I, to be honest, <laughs> I, like, I pulled a little bit of uh, inspiration here from uh from the matt damon's character in true grit which is basically him doing his matthew mcconaughey impression for like two and a half hours oh okay all right all right, all right all right if you if you look up him doing his mcconaughey impression on youtube you will absolutely see it's the exact same i've seen it and yes can confirm okay so i believe we were at the jeff goldblum type again uh yeah that would be me i'm uh, you know as 
you know, I'm not, a, I'm not obviously not an actor, but uh, I am a word person and part of my ignorance, but what the hell does smarmily mean? Oh, in a smarmy manner. What does smarmy mean? Kind of smug, I guess. Okay. Smug. Uh, should I cross my arms? Is it like smug, but like with a crossed arms? It's up arms? to you. Smar- Again, smarmy? like there's no expectations of being an actor here. You can okay. even ignore the like the performer notes there. You know, just, okay. you, you read the words as written and, you know, say it how you want. Just trying to get into the role here. <clears throat> Do you trust Madam President? Man. Of course. Then you'll just have to trust that she's brought me in for a reason, man. <laughs> the group reaches the door of the war room of some sort, and the secretary, uh, I mean, the, the Matt Damon type stops and grabs the Jeff Goldblum type roughly by the shoulder. Now, listen, son, you can't make me trust you. In fact, I don't even think I like you. But I suppose, I suppose if it comes down to it, I've got faith in the Lord above that you're just a part of his plan. I weren't meant to understand. That's all I ask, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you have notes? Me? <laughs> well, I, I just, uh, you know, well, uh, what I have is I think you should cast me. I think you should cast me for this role. I feel like I'm really getting into it here. Like, no, absolutely. Whole new world is open out for me. Kelly, every role that you write for yourself, do you just find some way to make yourself a cowboy, basically? I don't know what you're talking about. We pick these roles randomly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It just kind of <laughs> happened. I wouldn't say he's a cowboy. I'd say he's more he of a... He has a southern accent, which is like an element of a cowboy. I, well, coincidence, you know? Like, you, you write what you know. All right. The camera follows as the group enters the war room of some sort, with all of the advisors variously working away at piles of handwritten and typewritten dossiers. None look up, save for the president. Uh, oh. oh, Mr. Kessel, you're here. At this, all of the advisors look up in unison, first at the Jeff Goldblum type, then at each other. Yes, it is I, Kevin Q. Kessel, the humble citizen scientist who found access to your inner circle by the pure serendipity of my ex-wife working as the White House communication director <laughs> and whose warnings you have failed to heed for months now, which has led you to find yourself in this quandary. Indeed, all of your previous attempts at solving this existential threat through the lens of defense or of energy or of health and human services have failed. And now you have come back to me, finally ready to listen after laughing me out of the room. But only after, of course, losing your precious White House and your even more precious Carolinas. Truly, at this juncture, you finally must come to accept that the real answers were not within you as individuals, but within the very earth itself. Man. Can I, just a, a note yep. here, this is all seeming very familiar, um, the plot points. Is well, this you know, from... there's, they, they say, there's the uh, the monomyth, right? There's only like seven types of stories or whatever. It's right. all a hero's journey. This is like, almost seems like a word for word, um, like, rewrite of, I want to say Boss Baby. Is that the right one? Is I anyone else getting Boss Baby vibes? Okay. Okay. Maybe, uh, I, maybe I, I, I have only seen one film, which is Boss Baby. But yeah, I'm getting a lot of Boss Baby vibes. From I this. was thinking it was Terrifier 2. I mean, I only saw the first one. Mm. But this feels like if I would assume where that first movie was going in a sequel, this is pretty close. Right. Totally. Yeah. The Jeff Goldblum type is giving me serious cl- clown vibes here. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I haven't seen that one either. So I really only know Jeff Goldblum from uh, 1986's The Fly. So <gasps> that's it. That's what he's ripping off. I get you. I, get you. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> Wasn't he I'd also in that uh, that space movie with the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prometheus. That has dinosaurs yes! in it. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. Well, it did. If you watch the deleted scenes, there was a real, there's a big dinosaur narrative that they cut out and post, which I thought was crazy. 
the -hmm. whole like lore of that movie is that the blue guys are like crossbred with dinosaurs right and we're all descended from space dinosaurs yeah i think so i think that was it it's been a while it's been a while well you can't accuse me of plagiarism because there's no space dinosaurs in this movie i promise i mean yet not to spoil anything (laughs) well let's 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 move a little further and see how we go Poindexter tries to spring to his feet, but his sedentary and uncoordinated nature cause him to fumble pitifully and flop back to his seat, humiliated. Undeterred, he points a wretched finger at Kevin Q. Kessel. Enough! This man has no credentials. He's just a... Just a... a pu- Ugh, a what, Mr. Poindexter? A podcaster? Yes! Madam President, with all due respect, this is a room full of professionals, the most distinguished experts in all our respective fields. We cannot... The President rolls her eyes and sighs loudly enough to cut him off. Is that so, Mr. Chadrick? The President reaches to her right and spins around Poindexter's laptop for the rest of the room to see. That crazy zoom shot from Django Unchained to reveal that Poindexter has been playing a completely inscrutable anime bullet hell game like some kind of pervert. I, Mr. Pre- Madam President, the abominable Secretary of Energy notwithstanding, you must understand. The President reaches to her left and fans out Chadrick's dossier, causing a cascade of titillating but sensible nudie magazines to spill <laughs> out for the rest of the room to see. Titillating but sensible. Do you have like a list of like which nudie magazines you would want to use for this? Well, scene? for copyright reasons, they have to be fictional. Oh. Oh, so you couldn't actually use the 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 hentai of titillating. I think there's a hentai <laughs> called titillating, a uh, collection of unless they're willing to do truly like remarkable a, stories a licensing deal. But I feel like that's a lot of steps ahead in the production process. Do you want you know? to describe the content of titillating? Uh, <laughs> that would reveal whether or not I'd read it and, and public domain. <laughs> Not to be confused with To The Later, which is like a, actually a very, um, very cool manga uh, hentai about um, an older an older woman. So, well, I mean, I'd rather have a Tita to now, later. but I mean, you know, To The Later is cool, too. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> it's really good. It, it takes away like the age shaming. All right. Where were we? Uh, everyone present stands in total silence, save for Kevin Q. Kessel, who chuckles softly. Finally, the president gestures demurely with her hand to Kevin Q. Kessel. Uh, I know why we have a satellite disruption, man. The president takes a few steps toward Kevin Q. Kessel. All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's say that you, that you... Let's say that y- you want to uh, coordinate with machine elves on different sides of the Earth. They wouldn't send a direct signal, right, man? I'm starting to feel like maybe I was made for this role. I feel like I'm really <laughs> connected with the character. <laughs> he's, yeah, well, he's... You know, I'm discovering myself as a writer. Maybe you're discovering yourself as an actor, you know? Hey, that's it. That's it. Yeah, it really feels like I'm stepping into a new me. Totally different. Totally like a part of me I never thought I'd be exploring. And it's really Just great. a natural, natural fit. These, yeah, these lines are still coming off as like, a, it's, it's like I've heard them before. Is this, am I thinking Santa Claus 2? I haven't seen it. Oh, okay, cool. Never mind. Uh, ignore me then. Um, you're talking... It's actually from the Bible too. I heard that that was coming out soon. Yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, a big, so, I'm a big Bible I've been fan. Waiting for sure. so long for that sequel to come out, like almost as long as I've been waiting for the next Name of the Wind or Way of Kings book. Like similar. That's a jerk for all you fantasy nerds out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're talking about Line of Sight. Oh. Oh right. There's a placeholder there. You can you can just read the placeholder if you feel like you've got it. Like you you are acting. Maybe you can just riff that. Uh no, I can't just riff. <laughs> I can't riff that. <laughs> Despite the many hours I've spent uh watching Star Trek, I cannot techno babble invoking polyvagal theory or some such drivel. Placeholder for a bunch of turgid techno babble that evokes polyvagal theory or some such drivel like evokes polyvagal theory and the fact that like everyone in the room has now like started at uh, sympathetic agitated and aggressive against me to the until i 
just over dominate so much so with this garbage that uh, they descend into their dorsal vagal response and go into a full death feigning shutdown. Honestly, I, you did it perfectly. I would just take that <laughs> as the line. Uh, point Dexter. Oh, I already said preposterous. Sorry, oh, I was so into, oh, oh, I was so into the moment that I just oh, I went with it naturally. Okay, so yeah, wow, this is really crazy. I feel like we're really stepping into these roles. Okay, uh, <laughs> they're using our own mycelium networks against us, man. Kevin Q. Kessel opens his briefcase packed to the brim with psilocybin mushrooms. <laughs> the clock is ticking, man. <laughs> Chadrick narrows his eyes at Kevin Q. Kessel and begins to walk toward him. And just what do you propose we do, sir? Mr. Chadrick. Sorry. Chadrick? You having you having a hard time there? <laughs> let's let's take that again from uh from the president's line. Mr. Chadrick? Did you have a revelation while you tripped? Man. Secretary Chadwick. Chadrick. Are you people familiar with the stories about Mushroom Santa, man? <laughs> Chadrick explodes with anger. He looks ready to take a swing at Kevin Q. Kessel. You little fucking, is this a joke to you? Chadwick. Wait, it does say Chadwick that time. Did we change his yeah, name? You read the line as written, yeah. Chadwick. Chadwick stops mm -hmm. in his tracks, stunned by the use of his first name in this setting. <laughs> All stupid. present stare at their hands, <laughs> shuffle their feet, or otherwise fidget awkwardly. Why don't you ask the president, man? There is a moment of profound tension before the president speaks. I'd like to know what the Secretary of Defense thinks. All eyes turn slowly to the Matt Damon type the reserved yet brash Secretary of Defense. Now, I ain't a man of too many words, but I reckon it's time I made myself damn clear here. This man that already done stood for us, been told to get gone, and now stands among us in this, our darkest hour. Well, if I were a betting man, and I surely am, I'd say this man is a buffoon, a coward, and a miscreant. Ain't no two ways about it. After a beat, the president gives a long sigh. I'm mad that your last name is McCaller. <laughs> oh, I, I just used like a name generator. We just come out this way. <laughs> Do you trust him, Secretary McCaller? The Secretary of Defense looks over toward Kevin Q. Kessel, then back at the President. With my life. The President raises her eyebrows at McCaller. Madam President. Fade out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know. What did you guys think? You know, I, I feel like it's pretty much ready to, to send in to, I don't know, who's a famous director? Jordan Peele? J.J. Abrams. Uh, ooh, J.J. Abrams might be the perfect one for this one. I think so, Werner too. Herzog. <laughs> Werner Herzog. <laughs> Being that it's it basically a uh, total plagiarism of Prometheus Park, uh, I think J.J. Abrams <laughs> would probably make a nice, fancy version of it. With a lot of lens flare. I think uh, Darren Aronofsky has just finished a movie. He's probably looking for a new project. You should Is hit him up. True? Maybe Brendan Fraser could be in this one too. He could. He could he play could. the he could play the Matt Damon type. I feel like absolutely. Uh, I was getting a lot of Brendan Fraser vibes coming from you there, Kelly. I would, yeah, I there, would watch there's that. a lot of people that could play the Matt Damon type. We'll 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 get to it. I think I, I've got a few ideas, but I'm keeping them pretty close to the chest. Probably not Matt Damon though. Certainly, right? Oh. No, he's too old for it now. He's got to be strapping and handsome, and you know, good at improv. I just remembered what movie I was thinking of. It was that one that's like about like this that small holiday totally that some people it. celebrate. Groundhog Day. Bill oh, Murray. There it is. I might have been ripping off Groundhog Day. I will have to go back and look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other than that, no notes.